Hello everyone. Tonight I'm reading your book about a little girl who really loves bugs. It's called The Bug Girl and it's based on a true story. The first time I made friends with a bug, I was two and a half years old. My mom took me to a butterfly conservatory, which is like a zoo for butterflies. As soon as we got there, a butterfly perched on my shoulder. It flitted onto my hand, on my foot, my elbow, and my head, even my nose. It stayed with me the whole time we were there. Can you see the little girl with a butterfly on her nose? When it was time to go home, a guard stopped us at the door. I'm sorry, miss. The butterfly has to stay here, he told me. Say goodbye to the butterfly, said my mom. But it did not move. Carefully, gently, the guard took the butterfly from my shoulder. And after a moment, away it flew. Bye bye, butterfly, I said. From that day on, I was bug crazy. Other kids liked stories about cats. I liked books about bugs. Other kids watched dog videos. I watched bug videos over and over and over. I noticed bugs everywhere I went. By the time I turned five, I knew a lot about bugs. There are billions of bugs on our planet. Bugs have been on Earth way longer than humans have. They live on every continent, even Antarctica. One way or another, most plants and animals rely on bugs to survive. The scientific name for bugs is arthropods, but I call them bugs for short. In kindergarten, nobody minded that I loved bugs. When the other kids in my class started a karaoke club, I started a bug hunter club. Every weekend, my friends and I took our bug buckets and nets and magnifying glasses out to the stream near my house. We collected fireflies and watched them glow. We identified beetles by their two sets of hidden wings and counted the spots on ladybug. We watched dragonflies hover over like helicopters. We even collected stink bugs, which really can stink. Hmm? I took the bugs home to study them. Mostly I had to keep them on our porch so they wouldn't escape and crawl around the house. It just mom and me at the house. So we shared chores. Mom has lots of rules. Make your bed, pick up your clothes, keep your room neat. No ants in the house, unless they are in an ant farm. I have just one rule. All bugs must live. If there's a mosquito buzzing, I snatch it up in a napkin and let it go. We don't have a fly swatter, we have a fly net. One night, my mom saw a water bug, a giant flying roach in the middle of our living room. She knew the bug rule was very important to me, so she didn't kill it. She put a net over it 
and waited for me to find it in the morning. But when I lifted up the net in the morning, it was gone. When I got to first grade, everything changed. Nobody wanted to hear about bugs. Nobody thought bug facts were cool. At first, I didn't mind. Then I brought a grasshopper to school. I thought the kid would be so amazed by the grasshopper that they wanted to know all about it, but they didn't. A bunch of kids crowded around me and made fun of me. Sophia's being weird again. One of them said, Ew, crows, said another. Get rid of it. Then they knocked that beautiful grasshopper off my shoulder and stomped on it until it was dead. That night, I went home and cried and cried. Those kids are wrong, my mom said. It's okay to love bugs, Sophia. I know, I said. It just doesn't feel like it. I had to go back to school but I didn't bring a bug with me ever again. That didn't stop kids from making fun of me. Why doesn't she like regular things? I don't want to be friends with a bug lover. She's so strange. About halfway through first grade, I took a break from bugs. My mom did not like seeing me so unhappy, not one bit. She knew I needed to find other people who loved bugs as much as I did. She wrote an email to a group of entomologists asking one of them to be my bug pal. She wanted me to hear from an expert that it's not weird or strange to love bugs and insects. Maybe someone will write back, said my mom. Maybe, I said, or at least call. We thought those scientists would be too busy to respond. But three days later, my mom got an email. She opened it. It's from a bug scientist named Morgan Jackson, she said. He wants to put my letter online so that other bug experts can read about you, okay? Okay, I said. Morgan Jackson posted my mom's letter and he asked other bug scientists all around the world to let me know if they had any advice for a girl who loves bugs. Two days after that, messages and posts and videos poured in. I couldn't believe how many people around the world loved bugs as much as I did and how many of them were grown-up women. Some were scientists who wrote about the work they do in their labs. Others shared videos of themselves with bugs on their arms and then pictures of themselves hunting bugs in the wild. I looked at those messages day after day. All those people love bugs, I said to my mom. They do, she said. 
And they are not weird. Nope. They are curious, just like you. Newspaper reporters read my story online and started calling my mom to find out more about me. The reporters asked to interview me and, talk to the, um, and I talked to them on the phone. My mom and I even appeared on television, which, which was a bit scary. It's hard to be on television when you're just an ordinary person like me. But I did. I wanted to get the word out that it's okay to laugh back. Then Morgan Jackson decided to write a scientific article about how bug scientists can get young people excited about science. Morgan asked if I would like to help him to write his article. I said yes. School got a lot easier after that because I didn't feel so alone. And I even started to like more things like gymnastics, time travel books, swimming and technologies. But not too long ago, when somebody asked me to describe myself in three words, I said, the bug girl. That's because I'm happiest when it's just me, a few green leaves, some drops of water, and a bug to keep me company. The end.